Welcome to another episode of Building a West Coast Drive, an instructional video series by 2363 Triple Helix Robotics. In episode 11, we'll be learning how to do a couple of things. The first is installing the chains in the drive rail, and then we will be tensioning those chains. So let's get started. So what we have here now is our drive rail set up and we have our parts that we're going to be installing to uh, install our chains. So what we do is we write on the drive rail the spacer thicknesses that we need to put in here that will properly space the sprockets from the bearings. Um, and then we, we've got pre-positioned all of the, spro the uh, right um, spacers. So um, you can see what's here is a half an inch, and we've got um, 625, we've got 3 eighths, we've got 7 eighths, and we've got a quarter. And we've got all of those spacers set up, ready to go. And we have our bearing blocks that are going to go into those positions, and we have the axles that are going to go into those positions. And in the center, we have just a piece of scrap shaft that we're going to use to simulate the gearbox because it's not the real gearbox shaft yet. Um, and the assembly tool that we use to put these chains into place is this short little piece of shaft that is just uh, long enough that it will couple these two sprockets together and it will fit inside of the drive rail. We should say that when we have when we set up our sprockets we set it up so that the hubs for the sprockets always face towards the outside of our drive rail and you can tell the difference between the inside and the outside of the drive rail by this pattern of holes that's on the end so the whole the pattern of holes on the end faces towards the inside of the robot because this is where the L bracket goes that uh, attaches to our ladder bar so if we look over, the hubs are facing towards the outside. First step is what? To hold that drive rail vertical? Yeah, you gotta hold it up on its side like this. Yep. And then next what you're gonna do is you take the whole assembly that you have laid out here with the sprocket and the chain, and you have to- okay, somebody hold onto that rail for her. Slowly drop it through. There we go. So then when you get to up here, you kind of have to pass it down to your finger in the top hole. Good. Let go. Like that. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the top shaft and you're going to try and push it right through this sprocket that you call with your finger. And once that first shaft is in, then everything's secure, right? Pretty much. <laughs> so then... Okay, so that's yeah. the first one. Next, you're going to put the middle one in. So, so you're going to put the middle shaft in and press out, push out the, uh, yeah, the short so little shaft? You're going to go out. So basically, you're just swapping them. Okay. Okay, so now that one's in. Okay. And then you're going to put the bottom one in. Okay. Good. Okay. Now what? So then, after that, you're going to put the spacers in. Yep. And so we can look at the numbers that we made because I think it got mixed up a little yeah. bit. And so that means we're going to have a quarter inch on this side so we can slide that one in. Yep. Like that. And cool. Then Keep your hands on that tube, guys. Don't let it fall. We're going to have seven eighths on this side. Yeah. Put that one on. Okay. Slide it in. And so that'll make it even and make sure that it stays tight and centered. Um, okay. So we're going to have three eighths on this side. Okay. Um, half an inch here. And five eighths here. Yep. Are you missing one? Oh, I'm missing one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then what? We put the we put the top bearing plates on next. Yes. Yeah, 
Yes, we can do that or put the center ones on. Okay, so you're gonna have to take those screws out. Put that on like that. Yep. And then we put the other side on like this. And you okay. have to make sure that the little lips are on the side of the shaft. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like that. Okay. And, and then, then go ahead and tighten those up. Yeah. Okay. Like that. And is that still loose enough to slide or is it pretty tight? Um, Do you yes. want it loose enough to slide? Um, yeah, you can. Okay. Loosen it up. Cool. Okay. Now we That'll do the bottom make it one. It's easier to get the bearings in. Okay, that's one. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do the center bearings. And being able to slide this will help when you put, like, when there was an actual gearbox on there. And yep. putting the bearings on. Okay. And the one that's on the outside is the real bearing. The one that's on the inside sort of simulates the gearbox. Turn the, yeah. yeah I there you go. There you go. Okay, can you get it in there? Okay, and now this is next one. Okay. Okay, so now that we've got our inner one there, everything should be secure, right? So we should be able to lay it down on the table and pull the blocks tight. Okay, okay. So, so now we gotta pull these out and then tighten them. We need the Allen wrench. Yep. Push it out as far as it can go. Yeah. And then you just tighten it the rest of the way down. Yes. Okay, and then this way. So push it this way. As far as you can. That way? That way. Yeah. Because yeah. you're tensioning the chain. So that's how you install the chains. Now the next thing that we want to do while we're here is we want to install the little cams that go here that actually, that actually tighten those up. So in order for these bearing carriages to stay tensioned, we use these snail cams. And when they're installed, this screw will go through the bearing rail or the the drive rail I should say and then this cam will go right on the inside and we will adjust it so that it presses on the bearing carriage and holds it out so we'll go ahead and install the first one so that, that goes through And we're going to need to loosen up the socketed cap screws that clamp this in place so that it can slide freely. There. Can you move? Yep. Okay. Now you use that cam and the, uh, and the wrench to turn it. You can just do it with your By hand. Okay. So you click it until it's... Until it's about right? Yep, almost so it'll feel tight, but not too tight. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. Do and you like turn it by hand to, to see how it feels? Yeah. I can just do that. I mean, it feels pretty normal because I think, is this side loose yet or not tension? No. Give it, give it one more click and see what, see what it does. Okay. Okay, that feels, that feels pretty tight. Yeah. All right. And then what do you do? So you, then you tighten you have, that up? Yep, you tighten these again. You'll tighten this too. <laughs> yep. So you so lock it in place. This, and mm -hmm. then you'll tighten these. Nice. So now it should okay. Really tight. Does that feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Really smooth. <laughs> All right. And you guys can do that one. Loosen it, yeah. Yep. There you go. That's it. Now will the will the carriage slide a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Clockwise. There you 
There you go. Okay. Leave it a little loose so you can rotate it. There. Okay. How's it feel? Good. Good. And you feel it, Natalie, because you've done it before. That feels pretty good. And also, you kind of want to leave it not on its tightest thing, so when the chain does get loose during competition, then you can tension it and make it tighter. Okay. Now we're ready to clamp the blocks. Nice. Okay, so there, now the chains are fully installed and when we assemble the gearbox and install it, then this shaft will get pushed out and the, and the center axle will go into its place. All set? All right. Good job, guys.